Good morning, everyone. Figured I'd do a quick video. I got a busy day today. I'm hosting a party. Still want to get some work done. I'm trying to keep to my New Year's resolution of being a responsible human adult at age 35 and a half. So let's get started. Uh, I'm continuing with this bin of thrifted clothing or consigned clothing. Or sorry, these is all thrifted clothing or purchased from a lot that I had formerly consigned for the most part. There might be some pieces here that I never got a chance to list at the clothing store, but I'm noticing right here at the very top, one of my old accounts, and it should have been discounted December, around basically the time I stopped working, uh, 2014. Uh, so first up, this is actually a really nice shirt. It's got like this like rust blue and gray pattern going through it. I hope it gets picked up properly. Um, I'm not mic'd right now and I can't see. I have my phone running, so. Fingers crossed this is usable. It's a D Moreno shirt made in Paris, or the brand's from Paris. This is like a maybe 80s looking cut. By the way the tag looks, it looks like it might be 80s. I'll try to post photos of what they could go for, similar shirts. This is a poly rayon blend. <clears throat> it looks real nice. Um, oh, sorry, it's a poly cotton blend. It does look real nice. I like the style, and it just kind of, I don't know. This with some nice jeans might look good. Hopefully it breathes. I can see right through it as I'm holding it up through the light. So uh, hopefully that makes up for the fact that it's poly. I'll blend it in there. <clears throat> up next, I got a Paul Frederick shirt. Another one I can basically see through when I pass the light. Maybe it's just a virtue of having the LED light. Uh, this is a 16 and a half, so a large full cotton. Um, imported broadcloth cotton, single needle tailoring. <clears throat> I love learning all the like unique types of cottons and see how much they go up. I learned about Supima yesterday. I thought I was misreading a, a tag, but that's the Super Pima cotton. And of course it's made in the USA because everything here has to be genetically modified and engineered. Nice fine plaid. It's a little dark in here, but I think this is a dark blue. Another nice shirt. Again, this was probably one that I picked out for myself and knew that I didn't need a 200th shirt at the time. <laughs> um, it doesn't have a tag on it, and uh, maybe it was in the shop, maybe not. Um, I I didn't end up listing this Simi shirt because uh, I think I kind of want to make it a goal shirt for later in the year. Yeah, I think, uh, I think I can get back into it and make it look good on me. So that one's staying hidden there, that's a silk. Another one of my favorites, Hermenegildo Zenia. This is a pink, light yellow, charcoal with black stripe. Uh, another one of the shirts that just screams to me, early 2000s, um, you know, maybe late 90s. Green tag, white tags. I gotta look up if that makes a difference or when their manufacturing date was, or where they manufactured. This was made in Turkey. <clears throat> I do my best to make sure I get a good idea of the timeline of when a product is made. Uh, based off the tag, but there's not a lot of resources for a lot of brands. So sometimes you just have to kind of guess or use deductive reasoning. Um, the label resource website, the Vintage Label Guide, they have some brands that, uh, you know, I didn't expect, and they have a lot of common brands that are missing, but it's a really good resource and it goes by date. Um, I don't know how well sourced it is, but for the most part, they seem pretty spot on. Um, and they show you pictures of tags with the years of the, the shirt print, so you kind of have an idea, like, oh, this is an 80s North or Korean made Banana Republic. <clears throat> classic, classic red pinstripe, white collar, Burberry. Z, Burberry's. Um, again, it's been a little while since I've been fully into the clothing industry, but I know there's a difference between Burberry's or Burberry. There's something along there that I'm gonna have to look up. This is a Blunden. Um, and it was owned by a guy whose last name was Amateur, without the E. So, I hope he was a professional and proficient in a lot of things to make up for that name. Um, feels like cotton. Doesn't feel like there's any stretch to it. It isn't like a natural pull. Yeah. Made in the USA. Cool, I'm sure that's a note. Burberry, sure. There we go. Just in case you didn't get a good enough look. Um, again, thanks for popping in and checking out these threads in the video. Hopefully I can be more consistent with the content. Um, I did sell something from the first video. The day after 
um, Bullock's Wilshire shirt sold for 34 bucks. I had that on Etsy for 29 for three months and it didn't sell. So um, I'm more motivated than ever to just stick to eBay. <clears throat> this one, I just have to price it high. Silk, feels silky, feels nice and light. And it is, uh, hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. Jaguchi? A jagu? A gugu? A gugucci? Yeah, great shirt. I guess that's like a, we'll call it like a copper red and black. Gucci buttons, got the Gucci logo hidden through there. <clears throat> yeah, I can see this moving pretty quick. That might go on an Instagram post, which I'm starting to get into. Ooh, another one of my faves where I got five shirts. We had this 60 bucks, the Xenia cotton linen at the shop. <clears throat> Not a bad deal. Yeah, 60% linen, black with, uh, that's like a kind of like, it's like a brown, I wanted to say like a metallic color, but I think that's just the light giving it an iridescent look, but uh, that's another kind of 2000s looking shirt for me, tag looks a little more recent, but the style, like a throwback look at an 80s shirt, but the collar just too big, uh, Actually, I don't know what I'm saying there, because you see big collars and narrow collars on some older shirts, so maybe I'm just, I'm just riffing, riffing with Griffin. Natural flubs, there's some natural flubs in the fabric, you'll see that in a bunch of shirts, uh, especially high-end shirts, and they'll just advertise natural uh, linen, natural hemp, but that just lets you know, yeah, there's going to be something that's an imperfection, we're not going to remake the shirt for that reason. <clears throat> Deal with it. Uh... Well, this one's going to be a nice quick sell. Clean John W. Nordstrom, which I think with the full name, uh, it means either <laughs> his mother's mad at him, or this is the highest, or one of the higher of the Nordstrom labels. Um, always well-made shirts, it's just not a brand, it's more of a store that people see, so I can uh, see why their shirts don't always go for a lot. We listed it at 39, it didn't sell, even when marked down at uh, 27. And again, it's just maybe the right guy didn't come into the shop. A pink brown? What is this? What are we looking at? Yeah, that's like a brown and like orange brown. Brown, like an orangey caramel. It's a nice clean shirt. I'll double check, make sure there's not too many signs of wear or use. But the cuffs are fine, a little bit of pressing as is expected with a U shirt. Collar's fine, although it does seem <laughs> like uh, they didn't have collar stays. Bless McQueen, not so close to the camera. So, <laughs> I've never seen this before. They used a safety or a paper clip as a collar stay, and the impression has clearly left a mark through the fabric. So. These are going out immediately. Um, my cinch technique, whenever you get your your little, uh, what is this called, drawstring or whatever caught through the other side of the hoodie, it's always good to just kind of slide the fabric over, pinch to hold the thing, pull the fabric back, slide it over while pushing the thing, slowly inch your way down, and eventually you'll get your drawstring out. Or in this case, the safety pin. Well, I think that's just the lighting. They got the camera still running. Or Buddha, or Allah, which has just gotten another language. Thank whomever. Just turn that PlayStation on just so I get a little more power to the television. Using an LED light, super jerry-rigged. Made in Hong Kong. I think since 2012, everything made in Hong Kong has to be written as made in China, which I found out yesterday. Uh, Egyptian cotton woven in Italy. Uh, tailored fit, which is like incredible. I guess that means that when you buy the shirt, they will tailor it to you, or they just decided, hey, one guy, we're gonna tailor a fit for you and call it a tailor fit. And if it's one of those freaking made in USA type of technicalities where they just name a region USA, and that's just named after a guy named Taylor, I'm gonna be so mad. No, not really. Uh, another John W. Nordstrom. 
probably from the same lot or the same thrift store run. Um, I didn't buy too many lots off people, um, but there were a few times at the shop where it was just, the guys just wanted to flip it quick. They didn't want to deal with the up in the air potential of maybe it not selling. Um, we were a one-way consignment, so once things were brought in, you didn't see it again unless you came back to the shop. Uh, it was just too much of a pain in the ass to return stuff, so anything that got stagnant would go to donation. Uh, but that doesn't mean we were arbitrary. We wouldn't donate things hardline three to six months or whatever the agreement was. We would just hold on to things as long as we thought that they would sell. If it's something that's like a Brooks Brothers or a regular Nordstrom and it didn't sell after six months, yeah, that's going to go to donation. We're not going to we're not going to waste too much shelf space if it didn't go. Um, it's kind of a bummer, but the consignment or the consignee at the time would always get uh, fifty percent of the initial uh, donation or price. So if this was listed at forty, they'd get twenty dollars on the, uh, the little donation thing. So it worked out, and for the most part, you know, people were happy. But there's always uh, the outliers, right? Um, so yeah, John W. Nordstrom cotton fabric made in woven in Italy, made in Hong Kong. All right, <laughs> good job, buddy. This one feels real nice. This is a uh, I can see my uncle Don in this shirt. He'd have to do a little bit more walking. But this is an Uncle Don shirt. If you have an Uncle Don, send him a, a link to this video. Let me know if you're large Uncle Don, but not extra large. Would love this shirt. Natural kind of tan color with a blue tonal, light blue, sky blue kind of in there. We're not navy necessarily. And then brown plaid. <clears throat> Looks nice. All right, let's speed it up, Sal. You got to actually photograph these. Another John W. Nordstrom, a small. This is the Smart Care, the stain and wrinkle resistant shirts. Uh, these are awesome for people that like, these dude, you don't really give a shit about uh, necessarily having to dress up, but you do have to dress up for work. You know, this is actually like a decent, like if your uniform needs a brown shirt or the office and you're not usually a suit guy, these shirts are, are actually pretty awesome. I don't mind steaming my own shirts, but I totally see the value of a shirt that's really easy to take care of. Um, it has been <laughs> uh, pressed um, pretty heavily, but I think that this will uh, come out a lot easier than uh, <laughs> than uh, some of the other shirts. I was working on those Arnie's shirts, and I steamed for 20 minutes on one shirt and couldn't get some wrinkles out. Murdoch, this isn't for you. And a smart carrier, water and stain resistant. You know what? I'm starting to think that maybe this is... I might have assumed this implied wrinkle, wrinkle resistance. Machine washable, need to tumble dry, iron if needed. Yeah, okay, so yeah. Well, there's no shame in proving or admitting that you're wrong and made a mistake. You know what they say about assumptions. This is a Baguta, Baguta? Baguta, probably Italian, for Neiman Marcus. It says so right on the tag. And I, I still need to see with that Brioni if it like affects the value of an item versus just having the brand uh, itself. I'm sure it does in some people's eyes, but as long as one guy doesn't care and that guy's buying for me, I'll be happy. A small cotton made in Italy. Got some Italian related threads. I'm really happy. I'm also kind of bummed that it took me so long to sell these. Karen Reverse, cool. Uh, nice kind of like gray blue, red, and that's a gray stripe running through that pretty lightweight shirt tag looks more recent kind of looks like the other more recent Neiman Marcus even the that care and structure in the plasticky feel doesn't feel like a fabric or something so it's probably like I mean I last got all these are at least I gotta do math right now in front of everyone eight nine years old <sighs> oh uh, don't say that oh, okay I did try to I remember this one. This is from the lot where Mama sold me a bunch of pieces for. They came out to about a dollar each. Um, this is basically. I think we is close to new. We weren't sure. This is an even Marcus shirt. It's got like this like argyle in the stripe, the gray stripe next to the burgundy off navy. Looks real nice. Again, I'm really hoping the lighting picks it up. It looks like it's all right. It looks like it's all right. Yeah, and I hope the autofocus is good too. Cause my God. <clears throat> um, again, this one's going to be a pretty nice uh, purchase for someone. We had it for 60 bucks. It didn't sell. It was probably like, again, right before I stopped working there, so I took my stuff back. And piece made in the United States, cotton, imported fabric. 
Made in the U.S. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Cool. Oh, oh, awesome. I should have put this up or found this with the other one. Another Bullock's Wilshire. Uh, another more like traditional plaid. That's a uh, navy yellow, white, and of course, a little vibrant red. I'm going to put that up again for 34 bucks, $6 shipping, and I'm sure that'll sell. Um, I'm going to, I mean, this company got folded into iMagnum, I think they said, uh, last video. So um, I might have priced the other one too low, and I'm so stressed for cash right now, I might risk it. Risk and price this thing a little higher. Cool. Oh, you know what? That other Lorenzini from the other video might have been from this guy's lot. Same deal, uh, over a hundred items, about a dollar per item by the end of it. And this still has the new Neiman Marcus uh, price tag. It was originally like $200. And I think we took off the whatever reduced price tag it was on it. Cause obviously we don't want to devalue or confuse the customer <clears throat> at the consignment shop. Um, small, medium, a little bit of wear on the tag. So it's been, just sitting around and pushed around and not worn, born, unless, do people do that? Do people wear things with the tag? No, no, that'd be insane. <laughs> Bomb wool, this is really nice. Um, it's got like the pinpoint kind of texture. It almost looks like a micro check like the other shirt with the weave, uh, with like a navy and then like a lighter blue uh, between it. Probably the same blue, but just the way it's woven and hitting the light, it looks different. Gives it a little bit of a, a sheen. 12. Excuse me. Sound a little congested. Congested, I am. Another Brioni, Neiman Marcus, light blue and white stripe. The white stripe has a nice little pattern. Again, it's like the diamond repetitious pattern going through it. Looks like a... Can't think of a word. That stuff at Gardens, not a trellis. Maybe it is a trellis. XL, made in Italy. This will sell. Um, I saw, I think last time in the video, it was like 60-ish per Brioni, some people bundling the shirts. So I'll be happy to get something like that. Uh, this is a Brioni Sport, kind of a copper with white stripe. I'm not familiar with Brioni Sport. I don't know if it's like a Ralph Lauren to Chaps type situation, but feels really nice and it still has its fold creases it looks like it's got all the fold creases right there so this one oh yeah brand new 